Well, HIV is a virus that infects the human system and primarily T cells, so the T helper cells to be uh, specific and macrophages. HIV enters through a particular receptor uh, that we call CCR5 uh, on the cell surface. And once it's inside the cell, it integrates its DNA into the genome and then really takes over the genetic machinery uh, in the cell to churn out more and more of these viruses um, instead of the proteins really that that particular cell needs to survive. And this of course leads to uh, that there's more and more HIV viruses that will infect more and more of these T helper cells. And uh, over time, this will weaken the immune system because these T helper cells will disappear. And uh, therefore, then initially, of course, patients will have HIV uh, in their body, but then it, uh, if the immune system gets to a point, weakens to a point uh, that is, um, uh, again, very weakened then, uh, we call it AIDS because HIV integrates into the genome. So it really will sit there in the T cells and uh, as long as that cell and even macrophages, uh, and if these cells you know, divide and multiply, it will stay with the cell, it will not get lost. And, and un unfortunately, HIV is also known to hide in our bodies or in the bodies um, because it, we call it reservoirs. It goes to places where it's very difficult to find. So it hides out in our cells. Uh, and of course, with antiretroviral therapy, we can control HIV. But we also know once we stop antiviral therapy, the virus comes back because the virus does hide out in these reservoirs in the body. Most other viruses don't integrate into the DNA. Therefore, they don't stick around for a very long time. They cause problems immediately, and then they go away because the cells that, they are, that are infected will die, and the virus doesn't infect any other cells and doesn't integrate into these cells. Um, that's why the flu, it takes a while. You get really sick if you don't treat it, and then it's done with. <laughs> so stem cell transplantation is a treatment that Timothy Ray Brown received for his cancer, for his leukemia. And this again, how it all started out, because as you know, Timothy, Timothy was cured of HIV because he received the bone marrow transplant, uh, but he didn't receive the bone marrow transplant, of course, for his HIV. He got the bone marrow transplant because he also had leukemia. And this is exactly bone marrow transplantation is a treatment that we use to treat cancer, leukemias, lymphomas. Now, this is, we take the cells from somebody else, healthy cells, those are tissue matched with the patient, and then transplant them into the patient after conditioning. That means we give the patient chemotherapy and or radiation to kill most of the cancer and also help the donor cells from the healthy donor to engraft. And this is you know, how we kill the cancer and also these donor cells the, from the donor, they can also help eradicate the cancer in the patient. And that's again what we call stem cell transplant. Now, as you know, Timothy was particularly, well, he was obviously had really bad luck that he had both. He got the leukemia and he had HIV. But as you also know, he was very lucky that he was a, actually um, able to be at that time in Berlin and, and have a physician who deeply cared about HIV as well. And uh, that physician was looking for a special donor who was resistant to HIV. This was the very exciting thing. As I mentioned earlier, HIV gets into our cells through that CCR5 receptor which is kind of a trap door for HIV. So it, it attaches and then gets in there. But there's about 1% of European uh, people uh, who carry a pair of these CCR5 genes that are actually broken or mutated. So HIV cannot get into those, um, it cannot get into those cells. And Timothy got exactly cells from such a donor. And that's why he got a transplant from a donor 
that was resistant to HIV. So that those donor cells now could kill the cancer and couldn't get reinfected. Now, what was done, you know, in Timothy's case, that he was cured with a bone marrow transplant. And as you know, there's the London patient and there's some likely some other patients out there. So we know this approach can work, uh, but it's just not uh, at this point translatable to patients without cancer. It's just too hard on patients to go through this entire process. And that's why we're, we're still working on, on ways, on gene therapy uh, approaches that we could you know, simplify and give to patients. So we work on an in vivo gene therapy approach. So we could actually give that gene therapy uh, with a simple injection, with a simple shot in the arm, to be honest. That's kind of what we work on uh, in the laboratory. That is a very difficult question to answer. As you know, people have been at these vaccines for a very long time. So that is very difficult. I, I hope there will be a vaccine, but I also hope, and this is obviously what we've been interested in uh, very much, is that we will find a cure so we don't have to just rely on a successful vaccine. Because a little bit because of the things I mentioned earlier, because HIV if affects or infects exactly those cells that are supposed to make an immune response. <laughs> now that's what we're trying to get with a vaccine. But HIV if infects exactly those cells. So it weakens the ability of the body to make an immune response which is necessary for a vaccine to work. That's one reason. And of course, the other reason is HIV is very smart. It keeps mutating, so it changes all the time, right? So you, even if you get a response, that response may not be lasting because the virus changes. So CRISPR is like you know, the new gene editing uh, tool uh, that's been now around for you know, several years. And I believe you've probably heard about some of these cures more recently uh, or, you know, for sickle cell disease, um, that this is possible, um, that patients can get cured with CRISPR-based uh, gene therapy or gene editing. So it's actually a pretty cool, I have to say, and pretty remarkable tool that CRISPR. It's like, you know, you may have heard it. It's like molecular scissors. So we can actually you know, these scissors can really cut and make changes in your DNA, so in your blood cells. And so we can, when, we, when I talk about we inject these gene editing instructions, we can kind of, you know, we can imagine that, uh, send in these little scissors, right, and make particularly cuts and introduce that CCR5 mutation that will shut that trapdoor for HIV. So that's kind of, you know, what can be done in, in certainly in animal studies already, uh, of course, we're trying to really take this to patients. <laughs> now, when you talk about this, you seem very excited. I am. <laughs> I'm Why? very excited. Why are you so excited about it? Because this is really, this would allow um, all the patients in low income, low resource settings to also receive this kind of therapy, this kind of gene therapy that is currently really restricted to um, developed countries like the United States and restricted to these highly specialized facilities that we currently need for the ex vivo gene therapy or the stem cell transplants. I think people should know We've learned from stem cell transplantation that it can be done. We just have to now figure it out how it can be done uh, in a way so it will be available for most people affected by HIV. I want to again sort of give my gratitude to Timothy, who unfortunately passed away recently, because he really, he, he, I've said this in several interviews, He's really been, in my opinion, responsible for launching this cure effort and this cure interest 
in the uh, HIV community um, and at the NIH to in fact provide funding um, to pursue cure, again, a cure for HIV. Before then, before just 10 years ago, this wasn't really a big effort, um, funding effort by the NIH. So thank you, Timothy.